Hello students, this is Pathology, Chapter 7, Part 3. The central cementifying and central ossifying fibromas are benign, well-circumscribed tumors. They usually occur in adults in the third and fourth decades, and in females more than in males, mostly in the mandible. Radiographic appearance varies from radiolucent to radiopaque, depending on the amount of calcified tissue. It contains fibrous connective tissue and calcifications and is treated with surgical excision. Recurrence is rare. Benign cementoblastoma is a cementum-producing lesion. Radiographically, it is a well-defined radiopaque mass with a surrounding radiolucent halo. It is treated with enucleation of the tumor and removal of the involved tooth. It does not recur. Mixed odontogenic tumors include ameloblastic fibroma, ameloblastic fibroodontoma, and odontoma. Ameloblastic fibroma is a benign, non-encapsulated odontogenic tumor. It occurs in young children and young adults, and more often in males. It most commonly is seen in the mandibular bicuspid and molar region. It is composed of both strands and small islands of odontogenic epithelium and tissue that resemble the dental papilla. Radiographically, it is a well-defined or poorly defined unilocular all or multilocular radiolucency. It is treated with surgical excision and has a low recurrence rate. Odontoma. A compound odontoma is a mass that resembles teeth and is usually located in the anterior maxilla. A complex odontoma is a mass that does not resemble teeth and is usually located in the posterior of the mandible. Most are found in adolescents and young adults. The clinical manifestation is failure of a tooth to erupt. It is treated with surgical excision. Ameloblastic fibroodontoma is a benign odontogenic tumor that has features of an ameloblastic fibroma and an odontoma. Most cases occur in young adults with an average age of 10 years. There is no sex predilection and it typically arises in the posterior jaws. Radiographically, it shows a well delineated radiolucent lesion that may be unilocular or multilocular with calcifications noted within the radiolucency. It is treated by conservative surgical excision and recurrence is unusual. Peripheral odontogenic tumors include peripheral ossifying fibroma and other peripheral odontogenic tumors. The peripheral ossifying fibromas is a well-demarcated sessile or pedunculated lesion most likely derived from cells of the periodontal ligament. It's more common in females than in males and often occurs in young individuals. Microscopically, it is composed of cellular fibrous connective tissue interspersed with scattered bone and cementum-like calcifications. It is treated with surgical excision and the recurrent rate is about 16%. Other peripheral odontogenic tumors are rare lesions reported to occur in gingiva without involving underlying bone and they are surgically excised. Tumors of soft tissue include lipoma, tumors of nerve tissue, tumors of muscle, and vascular tumors. Lipoma is a benign tumor of mature fat cells. Clinically, it is a yellowish mass surrounded by a thin layer of epithelium, most commonly located on the buccal mucosa of the vestibule. It mostly occurs in individuals over the age of 40. Microscopically, a well-delineated tumor with mature fat cells uniform in size and shape is seen. It is treated with surgical excision. 
Tumors of nerve tissue inc include neurofibroma and schwannoma, granular cell tumor, and congenital epulis. Neurofibroma and schwannoma are benign tumors derived from Schwann cells in nerve tissue. The tongue is the most common intraoral location. It may occur at any age with no sex predilection. Neurofibromatosis of von Recklinghausen is an example. Neurofibroma shows up as a fairly well delineated diffuse proliferation proliferation of spindle-shaped Schwann cells. Schwannoma shows spindle-shaped Schwann cells arranged in palisaded whorls around a central pink zone. It is surrounded by a connective tissue capsule and is treated with surgical excision. Granular cell tumor is a benign tumor composed of large cells with a granular cytoplasm, most often occurring on the tongue and then in the buccal mucosa. A painless, non-ulcerated nodule is seen. Most are found in adults with a female sex predilection. They most likely arise from neural or primitive mesenchymal cells, they show large oval-shaped sh cells with granular cytoplasm and are treated with surgical excision. Congenital epulis is a benign neoplasm composed of cells closely resembling those seen in the granular cell tumor. They most likely arise from primitive mesenchymal cells and appear as a sessile or pedunculated mass on the gingiva. They usually occur on the anterior maxillary gingiva, almost always in girls, and are treated by surgical excision. Tumors of the muscle are extremely uncommon in the oral cavity. Vascular leiomyomas, rhabdomyoma, and leiomyoma. Rhabdomyoma is a benign tumor of striated muscle. Lyomyoma is a benign tumor of smooth muscle. Rhabdomyosarcoma is a malignant tumor of striated muscle. It is the most common malignant soft tissue tumor of the head and neck in children. It typically occurs in children under 10 years of age, has a male sex predilection, and is a rapidly growing destructive tumor. It is usually treated with multidrug chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery, and has a very poor prognosis. Vascular tumors are hemangioma, lymphangioma, and malignant vascular tumors. Hemangioma is a benign proliferation of capillaries. Capillary hemangioma contains numerous small capillaries. Cavernous hemangioma contains larger blood vessels. Most hem hemangiomas are present at birth or arise shortly thereafter. More than half occur in the head and neck area. The tongue is the most common intraoral location. It is more common in female and may occur in adults in response to trauma. They frequently blench when pressure is applied. Treatment may undergo spontaneous remission and treatment is variable, including surgery or the injection of asclerosing solution. Lymphangioma is a benign tumor of lymphatic vessels, which is present at birth. Half of them arise in the head and neck area and has no sex predilection. Intraorally, the most common location is the tongue, where it is an ill-defined mass with a pebbly surface. A cystic lymphangioma in the neck is a cystic hygroma. Treatment is surgical excision and they do tend to recur. Malignant vascular tumors. Angiosarcoma may occur in the oral cavity, but it is rare. Capuchy sarcoma may arise in multiple sites, including the skin and oral mucosa. It was historically seen in older men and a more aggressive form has arisen with HIV. Capuchy sarcoma and HIV. 
Lesions are often seen in the oral cavity as purple macules, plaques, or exophytic tumors. They are most commonly located on the hard palate and gingiva, and may also occur in patients with other forms of immunodeficiency. It is caused by a human herpes virus, HHV8, also called Kaposi sarcoma associated herpes virus. It is treated with surgical excision, radiation therapy, or a combination of both. Tumors of melanin-producing cell include melanotic nevi and malignant melanoma. Melanotic nevi. Nevus may refer to either a developmental tumor of melanocytes or a pigmented congenital lesion. They can arise on the skin or the oral mucosa. Intraoral tumors consist of tan to brown macules or papules, and they occur most often on the hard palate or buccal mucosa. Melanotic nevi occur twice as often in women as in men. They are usually first identified in individuals between 20 and 50 years old. Most are benign, but some may be malignant. They are treated with biopsy, surgical excision, and recurrence is rare. Malignant melanoma is a malignant tumor of melanocytes. They most are, mostly arise on the skin in response to prolonged exposure to sunlight. Primary malignant melanoma is rare, but melanomas on the skin may metastasize to the oral cavity. Usually a rapidly enlarging blue to black mass is seen. It is an aggressive tumor with unpredictable behavior and early metastasis. Most common intraoral locations are the palate and maxillary gingiva. They usually occur in adults over 40 years of age and are treated with surgical excision. Chemotherapy may be used along with surgery and they have a poor prognosis. Tumors of bone and cartilage, tori, are not true tumors. Exostosis, osteoma, osteosarcoma, and tumors of cartilage. A torus is a benign lesion composed of normal compact bone located on the midline of the palate or on the lingual aspect of the mandible in the area of the premolars. Here are some pictures of lobulated tori. An exostosis is a small nodule excrescence of normal compact bone. An osteoma is an asymptomatic benign tumor composed of benign compact bone. Radiographically, it appears as either a sharply delineated radiopaque mass within bone or attached to the outer surface of bone. There is no sex predilection and could be a component of Gardner syndrome. They are treated with surgical excision and do not reoccur. Here is an image of an osteoma. Osteosarcoma is also known as osteogenic sarcoma, is a malignant tumor of bone forming tissue. The most common primary malignant tumor of bone in patients less than 40 years of age. The average age of patients with osteosarcoma involving the jaws is about 37. They occur twice as frequently in the mandible as in the maxilla, and they are more common in males than in females. Radiographically, it may vary from radiolucent to radiopaque and is usually a destructive, poorly defined lesion that may or may not involve adjacent soft tissue, asymmetric widening of the periodontal ligament space, and a sunburst pattern may be seen. It is treated with preoperative multi-agent chemotherapy followed by surgery. Jaw tumors frequently recur. This concludes Pathology, Chapter 7, Part 3.